Well, well, well. It's another one. It appears that I am stuck in work van purgatory. And that is all that I get to do in the month of October is fix Econo boxes and Doge vans. Oh, no, no, no. I had that, uh, I had a couple Chevy vans too. But yeah, all of these are service vans and require some kind of maintenance. Uh, this one, customer says it smells like gasoline and the engine is shaky and vibrate -y. Uh, All of those are bad signs and it does smell in here. Mm, I don't feel any shaky engine yet, but I do have a, a check engine service engine soon warning illuminator indicated. Let's see it right through there. There it is. Okay, let's uh, let's go into the shop. Um, I'm kind of scared to drive this thing, so I'm just gonna get straight into the stall and get the scanning device connected, and uh, we will see what we're, uh, what we're looking for here. Okay, scanner's plugged in. Things are powering up. Satellites are linking up in outer space. Communication protocols are being authorized, and we're gonna retrieve a trouble code or two or 10 or 35. Uh, this one should be easy. P0102 mass airflow circuit low input. That's what we're looking at. Let's go check the intake stream under the hood and see if we got some leaks or chewed up wires or something not connected or anything uh, of that nature. Open! Wow, this all looks familiar. What is this? Nice, that's uh, fully custom. I like it. Okay, let's get this air filter out. Let's see what's going on inside of the seat. Mass airflow is, I think, kind of broken loose. This is the mass airflow. And yeah, this is broken. That's eh, not gonna work. Okay. See, as air is drawn in through the filter, it ends up in the center of this filter. It's supposed to pass through right here. And you can see in that hole, that little sensing element, that's the mass airflow. Well, with this thing not being properly connected or sealed, I imagine that air is getting past it and it's not being metered or measured as it's entering the intake stream. I'm gonna go ahead and remove all this and bring it over to the toolbox to see if I can uh, reattach it or seal it up or fix it. Because uh, if you guys remember the last van video, parts for these things are unobtainium and do not exist. So story time real quick. I had a lady in here yesterday and she's got a 2018 Equinox and she just left the dealer after they sold her a mass airflow sensor for a mass airflow code. And her light came back on uh, the next day. She went back and then they said, oh, hey, sorry, you have a hole in your intercooler. Uh, long story short, it turned into a big debacle and she ended up here. And I explained to her that just because the code says something does not mean that that part is broken or does not work. All that that means is that system it, that is involved with that particular sensor has some kind of data malfunction or is performing outside of its expected range. For example, this mass airflow sensor, if it's not connected properly or air is getting past it, then the ECU or the ECM is gonna say, hey, your mass airflow is not performing as it's supposed to. And in this case, that's translated into a low input, which is low, low voltage input back into the PCM. So that doesn't mean the sensor is bad. It means that that system has some kind of a malfunction. And that's what I'm gonna address on this one right now. And this is the problem with, uh, I'll call them lesser experienced individuals and or uh, parts stores, for example. So let's go, I've got this little icon here and this connects me to the internet land. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna catalog all the iterations of this code and it's gonna graph those and present that to me as a probable cause. For example, I clicked on that, uh, on that icon, it brought me to this little web page here, which is within Snap-on's network. And everybody who got this code, they said, hey, replace the mass airflow sensor and then you're gonna be good. And then the next one down, a few guys said, oh, well, I cleaned that mass airflow sensor, that's good. Or I cleaned the throttle body, or I, I connected it, it wasn't connected. But going off of things like this, off of what the majority of other people has done, is not necessarily gonna be the proper response because we don't know if there's a leak somewhere. 
or if there's a restriction in the air filter or if somebody left the thing unplugged. So going with you know uh, Google searches for example or just based off of or, or just going with hey this says mass airflow sensor therefore I must need a mass airflow sensor is not exactly the most uh, diligent way to perform an automotive repair. You really have to know what's going on and know how the system functions before you're able to make a, a clear decision or a good decision rather on, uh, on what to do to proceed. All right, that's my soapbox for the day. Um, I'm just gonna go in here and review data real quick and we're gonna see what those mass airflow numbers actually say now that I've put the, the thing back, back kind of in its position. So let's go, uh, let's get into, it's gonna be in drivability, I think. Okay, so pulling up the data, I'll try to highlight mass airflow. This is way too low, 2.65 grams. Uh, this mass airflow is barely doing anything. Um, I'm gonna head back under the hood and uh, just make sure that thing is sealed well and then we're gonna come back in here and recheck it. If we get a change or any kind of drastic change then we're gonna know that it's a leak problem and if we don't get a change I'm gonna begin to suspect that it's actually a mass airflow problem uh, as, regarding the sensing element itself and uh, then we can uh, uh, order a, a replacement and uh, get the repair done. Okay, that figure of 2.5 grams per second, that's grams per second of air injuring the engine. That is a bit low, so let's go and make sure that this thing is sealed properly and it, in its closed position, that way there's no air getting past it. Because I did kind of leave it just hanging out in there for a little while. Okay, let's go back and review that data. By the way, um, in general and kind of as a rule of thumb, and it's not the rule, but uh, uh, the mass airflow reading in grams per second should be roughly equivalent to the engine liters well, when idling. So if this is a 5.4, I think it's a 5.4 engine, then we want to see, you know, five, six, seven, uh, maybe a little more grams per second, but generally we're not going to see less. Uh, grams per second than what engine displacement is in liters. Okay, back under the hood. Let's pull this thing out. And get a better look at it. Okay, it's definitely connected. Not really. And it was in there, but the, the clip wasn't engaged. That's a problem. Everything about this is a problem. And that's why someone just had all this apart at one time and they uh, replaced this alternator. And it's still got the sticker on it. It's not freshly new, but it's newish. So aside from this poor connection, see what else we've got going on here and that poor connection. Huh, looks like we have to deal with this poor connection. Again, unmetered air entering the intake stream outside of the ability for this mass airflow to monitor the situation. So I'm gonna put this thing together properly, properly, and we're gonna reinstall it, start the engine again, and see what the, the numbers change, or see how the numbers change on that mass airflow data. Yeah, that's, uh, that's probably the bulk of the issue right there, is this thing. Let's get this properly fitted and installed. All the tabs are still on it, so it should go in without, uh, without a fuss. I think that's good. Okay. And just for fun, spray some uh, mass airflow cleaner on that element to make sure there's no crusties built up on that. That's good. Okay, back under the hood we go. First things first, we're plugging this in all the way. And I'm gonna throw a bit of dielectric on there just for fun. There. 
because lube is your friend. Okay, that's a good positive click action. That's installed. Dang, it popped out again. Okay. Time for adhesive. Why is it not staying in its home though? It should be, all the clips are there. I'm reluctant to glue this thing in. I'm not gonna glue it, I'm gonna leave it like that. I don't want to uh, cause irreversible damage by super gluing that in or something. I'll just make sure it's seated properly. Once the air filter is installed, it'll keep some pressure on that and it should maintain its seal. And if not, the numbers will uh, will tell me. And uh, we'll go back and take corrective action at that point. I just, I don't want to put glue on something that's not supposed to have glue on it. that I really dislike is this uh, clamp device that's supposed to secure everything. These are a bear to get in straight and proper. All right, we're back in the cabin and we've got mass airflow grams per second. Let's see if I can highlight it here. And Look at that, now we're up to 10.63, 9.2, whatever, grams per second of air entering the engine. So now this sensor is actually able to measure how much is coming in. And my hunch was correct, there was just a leak there. Especially when it's been boogered up and things are bent, like this little tab right here. It's been forced into place because someone had a hard time once installing it. Am I gonna win? Nice, beautiful. Okay, let's head back inside and see what this thing does. The data will not lie. Restarting the engine. Reestablishing communication. Alrighty, let's scroll down to mass airflow. Da -da, where are you? There we are, mass airflow, grams per second. And we are at 9.8, 9.6. So this is way more better -er than what it was. We went from two and a half or three grams per second or whatever up to nine. So it's now confirmed it's metering the air that's coming into the engine. That's going to allow the ECM to properly adjust the fuel trims to reach an optimal air fuel ratio and uh, allow for smoother engine operation. So I'm, I'm pretty confident we've already fixed their problem here. Let's go recheck the code. Now we're gonna have one more because I believe I had the key on at some point or it detected that that uh, sensor was disconnected. Uh, intake air temp sensor circuit high, okay. Yeah, that's from having the thing disconnected. The, uh, the mass airflow has the intake air temp sensor integrated into it. That's why there were, I believe, four or five, six wires in that connector instead of just two. So let's go ahead and clear these trouble codes. We'll shut it down, restart, and make sure one did not uh, show back up. And you see here, money lights off. Let's shut her down. Restarting the engine. And we're gonna back out of this menu, go back in one more time, and see if we have a trouble code. Again, the light is no longer on. And all I've got here is a P1000 OBD2 system checks in complete. That just indicates that the vehicle has not gone through a drive cycle to self-check all of the components yet. Uh, that's uh, There's no fix for that, that will go away all on its own. That's normal after a uh, memory reset. So, all right guys, uh, I believe this one is a wrap and is in good shape. 
just to do my due diligence, I'm gonna take this out on the road in a moment and uh, test drive it. But I'm gonna go ahead and end this video right now so I don't end up with a, another hour long video. I'm trying to get it back away from that again. So all that being said, uh, I'd like to thank you guys for watching this video. And the only thing that I ask of you is if you like this video, please take the uh, two nanoseconds to scroll down and tappy tap that thumbs up button. That's what let you, lets YouTube know that I did a good job and that's what triggers the algorithm to suggest my content to other potential viewers. And that's good for me and it's good for them. So do us all a favor and let's give us that thumbs up button. And of course, I'm not going anywhere until I remind everybody here to not forget to have a great day. See you guys in the next one. Okay, second restart after I find my key. And uh, let's go for a quick ride. I know you guys cannot smell it, but I am no longer smelling that uh, uh, super rich running condition fuel smell that it had earlier. Honking for safety. That lets pedestrians know that I am encroaching on their space. Should there be any pedestrians? Because I can't see behind me. There's no, uh, there's no rear view in this thing. All right. And again, there's no. Uh, there's, well, number one, there's no seatbelt. Let me, let me just do that right now because that dinging is annoying. Come here. Surprise! That works. But there's no engine shaking or misfires occurring. Power band is feeling pretty good. Why is it beeping at me? I have the belt on. Like maybe it's broken. All right, well, uh, I'm about done here. I'm not gonna take this out on the road. I've already found a, a drastic improvement in the running condition of this vehicle. Oh God, the air in here tastes terrible. Ah, I can scratch in my throat, not cool. Yeah, I'm going back to the shop. I don't want to drive this thing anymore. It's fixed, I'm all done. You guys have a great day.